We know many of you have questions as you prepare for whatever Dorian brings to our area. Christian Smith is with the Red Cross. She has been, well, for years, educating all of us about what you need now, where you can go if you have to evacuate, and how to get help if you can't go home right away after a storm hit. And we want to help answer some of the most common questions that you have right now. Christian, good morning. Thank you for being here. Of course. We have five questions here. I want to get right to them, if you will, because I want to admit this is important for our viewer. So one of the most common questions is the most common bare minimum items that you need in your kit, because as we're seeing, many places right now are running out, so you may not have the luxury of just going to one sp spot and finding everything. Yeah, so food and water, you know, that's one. Your basic first aid emergency kit, just you know, basic first aid, um, copies of all your important papers, any of your tools and supplies, that's your chargers, your cell phones, all of those backup kind of battery things. And then of course you want to make sure that you have um, a copy, I mean, um, all your um, prescription and eyeglasses. Do you know, it's interesting too, because we've had you on and you've showed us the whole kit it, and everything. Mm -hmm. Is there something though that people tend to forget and they don't realize until the last minute? Yeah, so it's just those practical things, you know, you want, you know, you, everybody puts the food and the water in there, or they put their prescriptions, their eyeglasses, but then they forget sometimes about, do you have extra clothes? Do I have things to do for the kids? Do I have um, books? Do I have games? So everybody's kit's going to be unique to their families, but it's really about putting it together now while it's still calm, it's still beautiful outside. You're going to be limited maybe with water because those kinds of things. So go to and get the larger expandable ones where you can fill them up before you leave or before you go into your safe room. You may not be going and bottle, buying bottled right now. You're going to have to use the faucet, and that's okay, but being practical. Yeah, and, and doing it now because you're not stressed and you're not panicked, and that's when you tend to, to forget things. My, my son was asking me last night if he can bring his computer if we have to go. I'm like, nobody, no computer. Oh, no. All right. Yeah. Uh, the other question is, is can I stay or do I need to evacuate? And this is a big one also, and that's why it's so important to monitor the local news. Yeah, and, you know, this is where you heed those emergency warnings. If we are told for areas to be evacuated, then your area needs to evacuate. No if, ends, buts about it. But if you're in an area that's not told to evacuate, then you might have personal circumstances. Maybe you have lots of large trees. Maybe you're still have um, repairs from the last storm. I mean, maybe your home's not in the best of shape, or maybe you're just not comfortable staying there because you know you're going to lose power. So then you need to be thinking about, you know, will I go to a shelter? Will I go to all their opera, you know, other places? Do I have friends and family to go to? And you have to think about that now because particularly if you have a pet, and that leads to the next one, can I take yeah. my pet with me? Shelters, some shelters, do they allow pets then in Duval County and surrounding areas? Yeah, so some of them do. We have some shelters in Duval County that are designated, so you can go to coj.net. Um, you can see what the requirements are for your pets and when you can bring your pets. Now remember, if you come to that shelter with your pets and the event that those shelters are open, then you have to stay at that shelter. You don't get to drop your pet off. So some people get a little bit confused thinking that it's, you know, like a drop off. But no, you're staying there with them. How do I prepare my home is another important one that people should yeah. be doing now. Yeah, so, you know, basic things, you know, walking around. Have you cleaned out your gutters? Have you trimmed those trees back? You know, have you removed all the debris? And this is things like your garbage cans. These are things like, you know, those cute little flower pots and all those mm -hmm. kinds of things that become projectiles for your home or someone else's. Those things all need to be removed and that's the kind of exterior kind of thing. Then you do things like what George will do is, you know, if it's really serious, then you're gonna, maybe you're gonna board up. Maybe you're gonna um, take some more serious precautions and, and really go through that whole process. But every home is gonna be unique to their own personal needs. Yeah, it's interesting. I, they're building a house across the street from me and I'm looking at that dumpster filled with all this wood and I'm calling today to see if yeah. the dumpsters can be empty because yeah. you have to pay attention mm -hmm. to those kinds of things. Also, um, is it safe to stay in my home? We answered that question earlier. Christian, thank you. I know we'll be talking to you over the next couple of days to appreciate it.